Welcome to kind of the second episode of A Game in the Life here. I'm Ryan Miller, and this is the series that I created to encompass all things video games here at Ryan Runs on the YouTube channel. And this episode in particular is one that I had thought to make its own series at first for a bit, uh, but then decided it was just better to bring everything underneath the same umbrella here. Go watch the previous video before this. Uh, but it's because these videos in particular, these episodes in particular that kind of deal with just one game, have more to do with how I interface with games most recently. And if you looked, there's, there's a real bell curve to the way I've uh, played games over the years. When I was younger, not so many. Who could afford it? Uh, after that, way too many. Spend too much money. And now I'm kind of full circle. I've come back to playing one or two games kind of into the ground, like I mentioned. So these episodes where I talk about one game in particular are going to be kind of a deep dive where I've ended up after X amount of hours with any said game. Uh, where X amount is usually far too many anyway, but it's because I don't get out much, and I don't mean I'm in the basement playing the game. I mean, I'm in the garage, number one, but also I don't tend to engage in the larger communities around the games that I play, and this is for no reason at all, nothing nefarious here, no judgment call, of course. It's more of a time and space thing, a headspace thing, probably. And also because I like to figure out games kind of on my own. I like to engage with the systems, see what they're asking of me. I might min-max here and there. Uh, it becomes kind of my own little conversation with the designer. But I think because of that, I sometimes come away with some weird habits here and there, some strange gameplay loops, maybe, certainly when compared to the right way to play the game, which is another thing all on its own. But that's where these episodes are going to live, right? It's not a guide per se. You might still pull away some useful information, but that's not the promise. This is more about where that conversation went. Yeah, to me, it's the infinitely more interesting part of any game review or commentary or criticism. It's what that conversation ended up being for any given person. So for this episode, I'm that person and Marvel Snap is that game. So first things first, this is the deck. So aside from this being hyper-specific to my own experience, it's also pretty localized to this deck here. Uh, but I have used this deck to get to infinite. And I think, I don't know how many seasons they've done so far. Nine-ish. I've got to infinite four times, I believe. Basically, anytime I've sat down and tried to get to infinite, I have. So take that for what it's worth. You can use this deck to do that if you do a few of these things. So just to talk about some of the cards, uh, I have stuck with Blade, I think, since I've got him. I know Black Knight just came out too, and he's a one power for a discard deck, but I think he's for a different type of deck. I don't like the way, like whatever he discards, you can uh, put on the board again for four points. With this deck right here, there's not really many things that he can disc discard that make that worth it. So I've stuck with Blade. Uh, Morbius is another MVP. I wouldn't really go anywhere without him. Uh, his buddy, of course, is Modok. But wherever, whichever lane you put Morbius into, he needs a buddy, right? So a lot of what I do is built around avoiding Shang-Chi. I really don't like Shang-Chi. Uh, and anything nine or above, he can just destroy. So that does happen to Morbius sometimes. So if you put a buddy in the same lane with him, that'll give him some uh, buffer because if Shang-Chi is going to destroy a card, Shang-Chi himself, as with a lot of tech cards, as I guess they're called, isn't worth a lot of points. So if he's going to destroy something nine or above, uh, he's only gonna put whatever it is, three or four on the board himself. So Morbius goes in a row, get him a buddy. Uh, Swarm, I also like an awful lot. He will proliferate sometimes too much, so you gotta keep an eye on that. You wanna make sure you can always draw a card, so if you're coming up on seven cards, make sure you play some of your Swarms so that when you're done with your turn, you're at six, and you can draw a new card next turn. Kind of the only thing you need to worry about. That's also why I keep Colleen around. Also, when it comes to discarding, uh, a couple things. You need to discard. I know that sounds obvious, but in some other iterations of this deck, I have not had enough cards that have been doing enough discarding, so it doesn't make it as worth it. So uh, 
Colleen's there because she can direct her discard, which Blade was recently updated to do the same. Now he discards from the rightmost. So that's actually pretty handy, especially if you're gonna try to play a Hela towards the end. Hela's kind of my plan B in this deck. I don't depend on her a lot. She doesn't pop up a whole bunch. So uh, Colleen is good to have if that's something you're trying to work towards, if that's a plan B that needs to go into effect. Moon Knight and Silver Samurai, I kind of feel bad having those in my deck, but they're extremely useful. I don't typically like cards that mess with other people's hands too much. In an ideal world, I like games where you play your deck and that's it, right? You don't play too many cards that mess with other people's decks and ruin their fun and their turn. You know, there's your leeches out there. I would actually put Shang-Chi and uh, a few other cards that, you know, Scorpion, you know, cards that people do play and are perfectly normal and are fair game, you know, they're in the game, but I, I don't like to play cards that I don't like it when they're played against me. That's my stupid hang up. But for that reason, uh, <laughs> Moon Knight and Silver Samurai can't get rid of because they do an awful lot of good work uh, Silver Samurai was a very welcomed buff against uh, Arnim Zolas or Mystiques or um, Taskmaster, so uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Dokken I started using instead of Gambit and he's also pretty useful because not only will he give you another card to discard in the Muramasa shard, but uh, he will also put eight points exactly on the board, so it can't be touched by Shang-Chi either, so like him a lot. Ghost Rider is maybe the more replaceable card in this entire deck because he doesn't do as much as Hela, obviously, and honestly is, is at three points not always worth playing unless he brings back a fairly high point card, so him I could give or take. I think uh, Swordmaster could replace him okay, although that's another wild card, so you wanna be careful that you don't discard too much actually it makes it harder to play your deck uh, silver samurai i kind of already talked about modok i kind of already talked about uh hella i kind of already talked about apocalypse is okay so hella might be my plan c apocalypse might be a plan b uh, he's fairly straightforward he just keeps going up the more he's discarded but he's susceptible to shang chi although if you're playing it on my turn six there's got to be a little bit of a little bit of a dance there so uh, the real MVP six-pointer I have is Helicarrier. He, especially if you're doing conquest mode, where he'll dump three kind of unknown cards into your deck and might do that every single time. So he introduces some unpredictability that can be super valuable in the game. Uh, but also he's straight up 10 points if you have to just play him, period. So uh, I wouldn't go anywhere without Helicarrier, Morbius, uh, Swarm, and Moon Knight. Silver Samurai, maybe a close follow-up there. So that's the deck, right? And again, it has brought me to infinite four separate times. So it's not nothing, but it is pretty specific in its use. So I'm gonna play some games, and in playing those games, I'm gonna illustrate a little bit more about how the discard deck is, I think, one of the more flexible decks in the entire game. Also, I think you might play the locations more than you play your cards. Certainly sometimes, so I'm gonna to try to talk about the locations a little bit as I go also. Uh, but first off, and I'm <laughs> doing a lot of apologizing for this video, but I always snap and I always mute. So I know that's probably not very nice. And again, if you're a, a another nice person out there playing this game, I apologize, and it's great to have played with you, but I haven't seen Miss Marvel in months, and it feels great, so. Let's see. Machine World, I kind of love, because if he doesn't have a discard deck, I'm gonna pump his hand full of garbage. And I know I'm going to discard my Modoc there in that instance. Again, with this deck, you kind of gotta be not afraid to discard. It's where the strength of the deck is, so if you're going to kind of not do that in favor of playing other cards later. You're kind of missing out and stuff might not work out exactly as you wish it would. Uh, so Westview, you'll see, turns into a new location on turn four. I do not like playing two locations where I don't know what they are. So I will avoid that at all costs. Uh, same thing if they've been unrevealed, I just won't play there. And I know a lot of it is 
this might be where the min-maxing comes in, you know? I'm uh, deleting some of the predictability that really makes this game fun. But, and this is another thing I'll do with Machine World, I will play cards that discard, because if he wants to play it against me and discard my hand, great! That might work to my advantage. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm deleting a lot of the unpredictability, but to me that's, that's the push-pull of Marvel Snap. And if you're the type of person that, that loves that unpredictability, because that's also where a lot of the fun comes from, and if I haven't talked about trick decks already, I think that's where, okay, he is playing a discard hand, so this will be interesting. So, um, I think that's where the, the two ways to play this game come in. You can play with the trick decks. When I say trick decks, I might as well say tech decks. I feel like there's a few cards in there that don't do a whole lot except for in certain situations or the synergy isn't there unless you draw those two cards specifically. So, why do I have a different blade? Oh, he because he's playing to Machine World. He's giving me some cards too. Interesting. He gave me a Morbius though. That was kind of a, a bad move, I think, on his part. Uh, I would really like to discard that swarm so I'm going to play my Moon Knight because a swarm at five points is super useful. He's going to play Gambit and get uh, Blade. Get Blade. No, okay. I'm going to get that. Okay, so he's got an apocalypse that's going out of control. So that basically means I've lost one lane for sure. Especially if I grab his apocalypse with my Moon Knight right here. Yep, got it. <laughs> so wherever he plays that apocalypse, I'm out of luck. But I've got Hella and another Morbius, but I've only discarded three cards. Rough. All right. I should probably retreat because if any, if if he's smart, he's going to play his uh, Apocalypse in the center lane. Because usually turn six, you want to take back lanes because obviously then I have more work to do. But if this gets my guy, yes, I, I should really retreat right now. If Hella puts, so he played Apocalypse there like I thought, but if Hella plays enough over here, okay, so I've tied. So if he, the other card that Hella plays is in the right row, I'm looking good. It was not, it was in the left row again, fantastic. Got my Morbius close though, not really. 11 points behind. All right, so yes, like I said, should have retreated. So, lesson learned. Uh, I, I'm not entirely positive. This is kind of a new thing, the way the rank up works now. When you hit infinity, it, it just gives you a global leaderboard. So, as you can tell, I, I very rarely care about leaderboards, but certainly in this case. Um, but back to the two different ways to play this game. This might be the entire theme of this video. So if you like trick decks, you like tech cards, that is great. That is a lot of fun. I see it. How could you not? Because in the moments where you've played that combo and it's worked and it's almost one in a million and it's so fun and that guy lost out of nowhere and oh my gosh, I get it. Like I'm, I'm no, no shade thrown, as they say. Uh, but that's, that's not typically what I go for. So I'm maybe min-maxing to my detriment, again, to a little less fun, but uh, when it comes to, like I mentioned, kind of having a conversation with the game, with the designer, or however you want to put that, uh, getting really into the nitty-gritty, like really down into the, the cracks and, and, you know, which I'm arguably still not doing because I only use one deck, but I am, in the case of that one deck, really getting down into it. I find a bit more enjoyment. And yes, that's kind of what's gonna happen with these videos as well as these uh, ones where I talk about one game in particular are gonna come at kind of the end of life for the game. I don't know if that's necessarily the case with Marvel Snap here, uh, since it's something you kind of play, you know, as far as mobile games go. Certainly, I have a long history of, of spending a lot of time on mobile games. Okay, so we're in an interesting, with Asteroid M, I usually find if I get a Morbius there and then fill it up with whatever, then I don't have to worry about my cards getting sucked over there without me remembering or knowing or wanting them to. So I'm gonna keep doing that for now. I think I'm looking pretty good in the left lane anyways. Uh, wow, this was a bad pull. Again, I should really... 
Unless I want to try the dance where, you know, I play this to the middle and then he has to try and take both away from me and I try to figure out where to put my... How many have I discarded? Two. So there's a possibility Hella could come in for the rescue. So I'll save it for one more turn. I don't, I don't retreat before turn six an awful lot. Like, again, I feel like that's a symptom of a deck where if, if you're looking to pull those two cards to make the entire run that you're doing that more often, but that's not my deck. Again, I have a plan A, B, C, so I feel like I've got a lot of options. With Wong, uh, usually the lane where he's played doesn't go for a lot of points unless they play a Black Panther there, but given his other cards, I don't think that's what he's going for. But also, I don't think I can take the right lane no matter what I do. I do have a Morbius on the board, so this is my best solution. Morbius to the center lane where hopefully he doesn't play a Black Panther and the two discards give me a few more uh, on the left lane. And I take those two. Hmm, it's gonna be close. I think he has enough threes in the left lane. He does. Okay, well, it was close. Again, I was correct. All of my calls are coming true in, in all of my defeats. <laughs> so, <laughs> before you think this information is completely useless, I will admit, I think it's way more useful earlier in the game and against bots for that reason. So if you want a pretty tried and true method to get to at least 60, 70 ish, you know, that's about when the bots start to drop off and you're playing against real people more often. So they say, uh, I think this is gonna be far more reliable for you. In fact, arguably, I should have recorded this uh, in just such an occasion where I was still at a low rank. Um, but I am not, so we'll make do with what we got. At the very least you can see, I made it to infinite, I'm not lying about that. Am I lying about the three other times? You'll never know, but no, I'm not. Again, who cares about Ghost Rider, kind of, in this case. Plus five energy, I don't know what more I can teach you about that. I'm in a pretty good spot to use Silver Samurai and a Moon Knight in the same turn. If you're wondering what my method is for where I place the cards, grabbed his Shang-Chi, love that. Um, grabbed his death, he's gotta be hating life right now. Uh, I don't have, I mean, I'm sure I do, it's, it's more instinctual, so I should, probably should come up with a, a technique to tell you about there, but for the most part, I feel like I'm spreading, and I think this is a strength of the discard deck, again, especially if you get Swarm in the mix, but spreading the points around so uh, at, at least turn five or turn six, it becomes uh, at least a difficult decision when it, as far as what lane is he going to take. Typically you wanna take back whatever's not yours. This is a really bad pull. So I'm gonna hold on to it and hope that my turn five pull will allow me to discard it and then it'll be worth, I'll have six points to put on the board rather than just two right then in that turn. A lot of people will get rid of their swarm early, I've noticed. It's very rarely worth it, it seems. Although, all right. Wow. Glad you guys showed up for all of these, the worst games I've ever played. So he might be looking at Arnim Zola, although if he had an Arnim, I would have got him with Silver Samurai and I didn't, so he would have need to pulled him on turn five or six. But I'm in a real bad place. I can take back, I can tie or take back that lane right there, but that doesn't do me a whole lot because all he needs to do is play in the middle and I've got nothing there I can do, so. We are actually going to retreat for this one. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Maybe I will stop playing this game. <laughs> Um, but yeah, not, not to, to, uh, overdo this point, but 
If you're into the type of decks that are so fun that one or two cards kind of make the whole thing, I don't think this video is going to be for you. This is more about um, having uh, more than a few options with, with certain decks and definitely sucking out some of the fun of Marvel Snap while you are at it. Cards cost one less. Everybody loves that one. I don't know if I want to play Moon Knight so soon, though. He's less likely, obviously, Moon Knight, the, the later you play him in the game, the more likely he is to grab, you know, turn four, five, six cards that are more useful to the person. Uh, I do like this over here, though. Because, again, drawing cards, the more the merrier when it comes to discard decks. Uh, speaking of the Abbey, first to put exactly two cards here, draws a card. I haven't decided if I'm going to put this up on the podcast feed. It probably doesn't play as well as the video, obviously. I, took, I just discarded his, his uh, Mystique. Gotta love that. Uh, he's playing a negative deck, though, so we'll see how, how long that usefulness sticks. Okay. So, I need to buff up Morpheus a little bit more. Like I mentioned, he needs some buddies in there. Uh, this time I am going to play my Swarm, though, because that means Colleen will grab the Muramasa Shard, and he's going to retreat anyway, so. He agreed. It was going well for me. You tell by the amount of uh, boosters I have that obviously this is my number one deck, so. Uh, as of... Um, uh, how long I'm going to go with this, uh, basically until I feel like I've exhausted what I have to say about the game, and I haven't spoken enough about the locations, I don't think, so. Uh, collapsed Mine, it's hardly ever worth letting that stay, especially if it's a turn one, you just quit and get it back. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep playing this until I feel like I've said what I need to say about the game, so. Can't imagine this particular game, this particular episode goes much over 30 minutes or so. That's usually, I don't, I don't just sit down and play this game for 30 minutes either. I'm usually doing something else. This is, oh, you know, one of those games I've affectionately termed. I used to call it a toilet game, even though, you know, I've, <laughs> I've introduced my, my own toilet humor into the game. Uh, but I felt like that was uh, too dismissive, so I call it a number two game. You know, so. I'm sorry. Uh, Morbius is great to play to Vibranium Mines or what's the one where every time you play it, it throws three rocks into your hand. So places like that where people do not want to play there, Morbius is a good one. Also in Machine World uh, because they typically can't use a Morbius unless they uh, have a discard deck. So I like to play it to Vibranium Mines or that rock one because there's not much they can do besides continue to play there a bunch. Um, the collector for this hand is going to be where a lot of their points go. If it's a bounce deck, they might get some out of Angela too there. I haven't really been paying attention enough to know what they're doing. So this uh, Modoc is going to buff my Morbius, give me a bunch of Swarm and three new cards from Helicarrier. Yes, I lose my Hella, but again, that's kind of a plan C, really. I'd rather have the unpredictability or the, the, the new um, Helicarrier cards. Okay, so looking pretty good. I want to try and take that middle lane back if I can, and I think I can, which actually leaves me. So yeah, that's good. That'll take that back if he doesn't play there. If he does, I'm going to lose it anyways, but that lets me buff up this a little bit more. And we'll give Morbius three more points just in case he tries. Also, I can't play it with Namer or he won't get the 11 hertz. Okay, so I lost the middle. Decent play on the left there. I don't know if I'm going to survive that, actually. I am not. Regardless, 
These are this is useful information. Hey, that's what we talked about, right? This doesn't have to be useful information. That's not what this is for. This is, even though it's not well illustrated by continuously losing, these are the habits I've grown to use that have <laughs> surfaced as I've come to engage with these systems of Marvel Snap. So, welcome to my world in, in any case. Hey, look at this guy. One, pre-snap. Two, mute. <laughs> Actually, my name before it was this brilliant uh, reference to the movie Parenthood uh, was uh, you have already been muted or something like that, whatever fits. So, uh, Time Theater is fairly new. You kind of just take what you can get with that one. Never had it duplicate a swarm before, so that might actually come in useful. But it also might... I'm probably going to have to end up playing some swarms before they're done replicating themselves. Should I, you know what? I'm going to break my own rules here. If this guy... Uh, no, I don't really... Uh, maybe. Hello, I'm losing... All right. It's been so long since I used these. Let's just thumbs up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play one of these since I have another swarm since it duplicated it. There's another one that, oh yeah, if it, uh, if you play the card and it adds it back to your hand, cloning vats maybe? If that's the case, I will also play a swarm there because it just adds it back, especially if I don't, if I don't have anything else to play, it's better to get something on the board than not. I really want Morbius so I can play him in the negative zone. Like I said, I like to play him wherever there's a deficit because he can usually overcome that. Although Sunspot, that's who he got duplicated. That's pretty useful. Let's see if I can get rid of some other useful cards from his hand. Let's see if I can win a game today. All right, that's good. If I do pull my Mor Morbius, I don't have to worry about his Enchantress. And I've only discarded a Swarm so far, so Ghost Rider's not really any fun. Let's buff up the right lane here a little bit. I really need a Modok or that Morbius on my turn five here. He has played Magic. Interesting. So, Magic's kind of a, a Swiss Army knife. That's usually... Okay, I did pull my Morbius, so that's good. So let's play my Morbius to his other Sunspot location, because I'm going to get some... Kind of breaking my rule about giving Morbius a, a buffer there, but I really want Colleen to hit that Muramasa shard, so I'm going to get rid of all of my swarms. Other thing I do quite often, especially when it's, or only when it's a uh, turn seven game, I think the game is over on turn six, so take a few minutes on turn six. Don't Play all of your cards. I have won a few games. Just period, I promise I have, but also in those instances where I've forgotten. And I'm looking pretty good here. I have priority, as they call it, because I'm I have the two locations there. I've discarded two, it's just swarm and the Muramasa shard, so it's really not worth bringing back that. Let's try. and hit another one of his specials on turn six. You do usually want to use your points, that's the thing, or use your power, what is this called? Energy? Energy. You want to, unless you've got the deck where obviously you get bonuses for unspent energy, but, okay. Hmm, I think, I'm going to be better off if I spread the points around. So I'm going to play that there and hope it doesn't put a Muramasa shard in the left column. 
Uh, but yeah, you want to use your energy. I... Did he not play anything? Oh, because he's just going to get the six points. Is that going to give him the right lane? Uncanny! <laughs> hey, I mean, <laughs> look at all these other techniques that are paying off from other players. <laughs> you want to know a real secret? This is the second time I recorded this portion of the video. <laughs> and I did a lot better the first time I recorded it, so. <sighs> but I've got the information distilled much more this time around. Weird World, both players draw from their opponent's decks. Fantastic. I feel like I get the most retreats from this. No, nobody likes this one, right? Is it just me? Again, I like playing the, it can be interesting sometimes, but Oh great, he's maybe he has a bounce deck, so I'm certainly not set up for that. I do have my Apocalypse and my Modoc though, so I'm at least gonna have a six point. Never mind. Yes, okay, well, yeah, that was a good card to get. Uh, Saker, the, that location, I, I'm gonna say Sakar because that's that would be in Spanish, which means to take, so it's kind of funny that it takes a card. Okay, Baxter building. Wow, this is, I don't like this at all. <laughs> Baxter building is surprisingly useful even though it only adds three points to the other locations. It is, I have gotten to a knockdown drag out in that location more than once and it has made the game more than a few times. See, I feel like he's doing a lot better. <laughs> okay. I, I was going to say Can't go out on a loss, but if I go out on a loss where they use my own deck to beat me, what would be better? All right, give me a Shang-Chi. He doesn't have anything over eight points. He does have priority though. So let's play it. To this because that'll hit Angela too. Angela! Who's the boss? It's a great show. Uh, but he's not gonna do that, okay. See, this might be. <laughs> yep, it was a bounce deck. So dumb! <laughs> so I can take Baxter building. And it will actually give me both locations. So this might be that exact instance. Ooh, that's gonna be rough. Nope, I got Baxter building. Okay, well, okay, there you go. So, <laughs> what's worse, being beaten with my own deck or winning with somebody else's next on a game in the life? Okay, so I think we can fit one more in here. What do you guys say? One more chance to win with, with the deck that I brought to this video. Hey boy, if you're listening to the podcast, man, got to check it out. Go, go watch the video. It was a blast. Snap. Mute. Oh, I met, he said hello before I could mute him. Touche, good sir. Means he's probably a nice person. Although with the, the character, like the, the names that they choose, I always try to see if I can figure out who the bots are, but it's, it's hard. Um, yep, I'm gonna play there. Again, minimizing unpredictability. I'm going, okay, on reveal effects happen twice at this location. This is gonna open me up to Shang-Chi with Dokken, but I love Kamartage. Okay, he's also playing a discard deck. Okay, or something of a discard deck. All right. It's gonna make Dokken worth 16 because he just doubles each time the Muramasa is discarded. So, 
can play both of these. That's probably just going to hit his Apocalypse, though. I probably shouldn't do that. That'll hit my two more Masas. And that'll hit Swarm. So, could be worse. Ooh, a Black Knight. Might only be the second time I've seen him. And they fixed whatever glitch was going on that any time a new card appeared, it said it was new like a million times for me. If I draw a MODOK, that's going to be great for Morbius over there. Okay, again, this is this might be more useful because he's going to pull zero pointers. Or zero... Um, I always get the, the points and power confused, but... Might still grab his Apocalypse. Yep, still grabbed it. Well, what are you going to do? It's going to be an interesting one. He's going to win wherever he plays Apocalypse. It's the only card he has left. I've got Hella, though, so I can pepper the board. Hella's actually still useful to play on Kamartage, even though I think I have that location sealed up, uh, because... In the process of reviving cards, she will spit out whatever has been discarded in the interim. So I'm going to hope she discards Helicarrier instead of a bunch of swarms. And there we go. And then hope she puts Helicarrier on the board somewhere. He played his Apocalypse there. That's even telling me that's what it is already. But that did it. I did it. I, w I won a game with this thing. And the video stopped recording. But I promise I actually won a game with this deck I've been using and trying to convince uh, you uh, is useful. So thanks for hanging out <laughs> on A Game in the Life. This has been Marvel Snap. The next episode will be Hades. Or not the next episode of this series, maybe, but the next episode wherein I deal with just one game specifically. Because not every game is going to work for this format. It's just the games where there are runs involved or, again, where I'm able to kind of go overboard in this type of way. But Hades will be the next one of those. As far as the next episode of this actual series, A Game in the Life, I'm not positive. But I hope you're there for it. And if you want to see them all the sooner, Patreon is always the way. Patreon.com slash Ryan underscore runs underscore. And regardless, thanks for hanging out. <laughs>